Guys, uh, it's Friday here after the close, August 12th. I'll just do a quick recap for the week. Um, I was kind of in and out, so I touched on a lot of markets in the room today, and I only got through about half of what I wanted. Uh, but there was pretty, some pretty decent moves today. I mean, that retail sales number was really something. So I think a lot of the currency markets were still stuck in a range, um, and that's that's kind of showing itself in a lot of markets. It's just a choppy August range trade. So let's just look at a few things. Um, I, I just did an update on the blog as far as Facebook. So, you know, we have some longer term positions that we trade around from, that's from an investor standpoint. And we'll generate income, additional income against those positions by selling covered calls. And I like to sell them out a week because few reasons those are the shorter day to the option right the more time decay you're gonna have um, and then also if you can compound your money three percent every week um, the, the, the faster or the shorter time frame that you can compound your money that's that's gonna over time uh, you're gonna start to have that exponential um, compounding rate of return work in your favor so instead of just selling calls out against your position for 3% a month, I'd rather do 3% every week. 3% um, a week every week versus 12% over the long run is still, is still a better deal if you can compound and start over every week and build off of what you've been doing. So we sold out the money calls here, or I think it was 124 or 125. But we've been long Facebook all year and we took most of our position off. I talked about on the blog that we're a little over. Definitely, I mean, this is just a power trend. Anytime the price moves sideways like this, just a slow, steady grind towards about 2 or 3 o'clock, that's just classic bull market power trend, all right? Versus a, a market that goes kind of exponential and rises vertical, those, those trends and that energy can't last when it goes vertical like that. That's typically called... Um, what you term the phase transition in physics and then lots of people use that same term in the markets uh, but that this is the opposite this is just a steady bull market so you can see the capital flow into Facebook has just been here ever since it really IPO'd but that said I want to see a weekly dip this is over this is high within the cycle all right if you were to put an RSI up here, you'd see that this is pretty overbought. We're up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight weeks. So this, now you're getting into an eight count on the cycle perspective also. So we want to put more size on back down on the dip here. It's probably, you probably won't get it until September, October. Um, so we still, we're small, small long here and just going to keep selling some calls against it. I uh, had some questions on oil. Oil I talked about, if we look at WTI crude, this area right here. So you see the wave structure was bullish. You can track this 30 here, which is the blue line, 30 day moving average. That rolled over and we started putting some back on. I mean, we were short for this entire move down. Got really light and covered up down here and just was a small, tiny core position through puts down here on the lows. We covered basically the low. This was the bottom of the two standard deviation regression channel. And I think I drew, I, drew, I drew this channel back in early July so you can project it forward. And that also will give you a good idea for time, how much time will go by until you hit that the bottom of that channel. Um, so now we've obviously bounced back towards the top end of the intermediate term range. So this is all a sell zone in here. You just have to kind of be patient as you're having a counter term, a counter trend near term bounce within the context of this intermediate term downtrend. All right, so I had kind of highlighted this 30 period moving average as a location for a lower high. And then what we also talked about today in the room is your four hour chart you can see there's a double bottom here, 40, 4580. This is the SEP contract also. I don't think you can see that on the screen capture. Um, we did roll our position today though, because uh, I think there's only five days left on this contract. So 
I'll, I'll, I'll bring up October in a second, but 48 and a half, 4580, sorry, 4580. This was support, came down, bounced twice, double bottom, actually held it again here, bounced again, and then broke. And um, you see, it did a lot of work around the same area. So we'll see if that resistance, what usually is support, breaks, then becomes resistance. And we'll see how much of this price action was worked off around that 4580. 4580 area, but you can also see that it's the pie line. This dotted line here represents what I call pie, the pie line in my model. So I'm not going to really explain that right now. If you want to figure out more information, you can join our trading room, and I go over I go over those types of questions all the all the time. JenkinsRM.com. But point being, I think you're going to really struggle back here, 4580. Even maybe up to 47, I'd be a seller. Um, but I did sell a little bit here today at the 200. We're out of the money overall in our position, but it's pretty close to the market. So when I start to get some new lower lows on the 15-minute and 30-minute chart, then I'm probably going to get more aggressive on the short side. Or if we move up here to 45, 46, that's where I want the majority of my size, and I'll put on some... 45 puts at that point so I like I like this bounce I mean we were oversold that's why we were covering obviously and then this was a pretty dramatic move down so we've already retraced the majority of the move I think it's going to be really hard to get above the this prior level this resistance zone so I think that's a pretty thorough update on crude you need to be a better seller though this is this is a downtrend Maybe you go back to 51, anything's possible. Um, but I'm looking for lower highs. And I want to play the edge on the four hour here at Pi. That's, that's a very high probability of the market failing in my model at that location. So you guys can stay tuned. I'll show you how we work at position around, around that level. I touched on currencies a lot already in the room today. Dollar CAD is range bound. This is a position I'm on, out of the money also on, and I did stop out on half of my risk. For the meantime, we're long from right right around this level, one spot to three. Just because I don't like the way we broke this wedge, so I'd rather cut my risk and wait to see if it, if price can regain this area. I'll just get right back long. But I'd rather have more ammo and more room. To add to my position lower. I mean, we could be in a 126, 127 to 132 range trade, big picture, big picture range trade for the foreseeable future. So we were building an ascending triangle. This was forming a base, and you couldn't break out above this green line. So it's just not time yet for this to move higher. And there is real risk that we could test the lows from May. So I just I'm just gonna wait and see. I didn't like the way it, it kind of broke that um, the ascending triangle or the wedge. So that, that dollar CAD though that's been choppy, and that's again to my point. Same thing on the euro. Some of the guys sold 112 in a room. I missed it. Um, you can see we were I was making sales up here with 12 handle before, and I just. I'm short from right, pretty much where the market is, but it's it's a smaller position. The euro just hasn't been very exciting to me. I've been playing more of the yen and the pound. Um, this has been a great trade for us, over 600 pips. I covered some today. Uh, the hourly was at the bottom of the cycle, four hour. You can just see this is just drifting lower. We're going to test these lows most likely from July. And that's true on the pound, uh, pound versus a dollar. So you can see the cycle is low. So that's it. Anyway, you want to cover into those the bottoms of the cycle, and then obviously you're short the the top end of that. So that's it's more of the same there on sterling. I'm gonna probably test these lows. Covered some here also that we've been short from. I mean, I think our average is one thirty six. So that's a long-term short. Also, if we put some Euro, New Zealand dollar back out, I like this from a swing perspective. 
just because they're back towards pi on the hourly. So I, I don't know what, what I was doing. I missed all this action here. But we sold some today. I'm just going to keep playing this, this range. I mean, shorted well, covered, shorted well, covered, shorted well, covered. And you can see this is the four hour cycles crossed and rolled back down. So failed right at pi. I mean, it's just classic. Everybody that's on a team and follows me knows that this happens on a regular basis on all time frames. It's just a great discovery that I made. It's a simple concept, but um, you know, pi is a perfect cycle. So that's the thing when you trade not just price but time, you become aware of these types of cyclical patterns. And uh, that was another good example of it. And we'll just hit a couple more. Gold I bought well this morning before the 8.30 numbers and got rewarded for it. We bought some here, sold some there. Um, I'm pretty light now. My average, my average is actually I'm out of the money, I guess, but I'm pretty light. So I'd rather get some size back on right down here around 13.20. You can see this is where pi is coming back in. This is a big level here in the higher time frames, 1311. Um, so we'll get to keep an eye on that level. If you break 1311, then we should test the bottom of these bands, which is 1300. And if that figure breaks, you're probably going to get a deeper flush back towards the 200. Maybe you check up down here around 1250. But those would be the two pivots. Boom, boom, boom. But really, when you break this TMS, if we break here, I would be suspect that we even hold this area. Probably need a deeper correction. But I don't even know if we're going to get it. So um, I'm, I'm, I'm long here. We took some off. I'm going to keep trading around, but I'm really trying to hold my size for this 13.11 area. I'll probably be a buyer 13.20. 13, 13, this is 13.30. 35. Anyway, you can keep buying gold on dips, so you're usually going to get rewarded if you time it right. Cycles low again. Probably not a bad place to put some on. This was a nice round trip. It took like 15 or 16 points out of that. So if you bought them here, you sell, you put some back on. It's just late on a Friday. I'll probably wait for Sunday. Long bonds, same thing, just a range trade, right? We're just bouncing around in the range here, so these lines show where we bought and where I took some off. Uh, I didn't buy anything this morning. I just thought we were in the middle of the range, so I was waiting for lower prices, and not much to not much to add there. I'm trying to think what else. I guess just lastly the VIX. A lot of guys been playing this with me as well and this is your two standard deviation regression channel I like to use that to determine a good risk range um, so this would be my risk range over the intermediate term and if you draw a horizontal line we're basically holding 11 the market seems to be you know kind of building a base or finding its footing around 11 you can the range looks like it's ten and a half to thirteen now. So my last two actions were buys, and I didn't get out here. Uh, I was traveling this week, so I wasn't on as much as I normally am. But that would have been a good spot to lighten up. We were high within the range on the hourly cycle. Um, so I'm just gonna wait and see. The next this next pop, I'll lighten up. Take some profit. I think we're long. I mean, I'm long 10, 11, 13 calls. And then we'll buy some more 11 or lower. I think that's pretty much it, guys. Have a great weekend. You know, if you're new, please visit the site, JenkinsRM.com. I'm building a team of independent and professional traders that trade literally everything and anything. So, futures, commodities, whether it be ag or metals or energy. A lot of Forex traders, and uh, we got guys and gals all over the world. So 
happy to have you join the room. It's free to join. And just had an options session. The next one's coming up here at the end of the month. I'll double check the dates on that. I think it's the 27th. And I'll be doing some more teaching on some of the option plays. Uh, I, I touched a little bit on the cover call stuff this today. Um, but there's a lot to be had in the markets longer term, writing calls and writing puts. So anyway, you guys have a good, safe weekend. We'll talk to you on Sunday.